Welcome to Module 8, the physical transmission media or network cabling, which happens to be my favorite topic in networking and telecommunications. Once again, I'm Ted Chandler, your instructor in this online course. After completing this module, you will be able to first discuss the importance of telecommunications cabling. You'll also be able to identify the telecommunications industry cabling standards that are the key to designing, installing, and testing telecommunications cabling. You'll also be able to name the six subsystems of the structured cabling infrastructure, and finally discuss the basics, construction, and performance of copper, optical fiber, and coax cable. This slide shows that network cabling is at the core of high-speed telecommunications today. Remember that all the active electronics in a network depends on the passive components of the network to transmit signals among each device. So it's a network cabling, whether in a LAN, MAN, or WAN, that's at the heart of any data, voice, and or video network. The need for broadband, that is voice, video, and data speeds or bandwidth is driving network electronics faster and faster. And network electronics need infrastructure to carry the bits such as optical fiber and category 5E or category 6 copper cabling. Note that network speeds to the desktop have increased 100 times since 1995 from 10 megabits per second to well over 1,000 megabits per second or a gig. Also note that for today's network speeds, you need at least category 6 copper or optical fiber cable to the desktop and optical fiber in the backbone. And note that in order to have those speeds to the desktop, you must have at least 10 times that speed in the backbone. Also note that LANs today are switched. In other words, they do not use passive hubs or rather exclusively use network switches. This slide shows the actual bits or electrical states in the form of on-off voltages representing information and that these bits must be transmitted through a physical media, whether that media is copper, optical fiber, air, water, or for that matter, vacuum in space. An ideal structured cabling system must address the following design criteria. It must meet all regulatory codes, such as local and national fire safety codes. It must follow TIA, or it should follow TIA-EIA cabling standards. It should exhibit flexibility in its design to allow integration of a wide variety of voice, video, and data components. It should exhibit modularity in design, which allows for active electronics to be moved and, and repatched without recabling. And it should allow for future upgrades, including moves, adds, and changes. Now, industry standards are the key to designing, installing, and certify testing network cabling systems. You don't have to follow the standards like you do with national or local codes, but to achieve performance, you had better follow them in your design, installation, and testing. Standards ensure only the minimum acceptable performance, and there's little margin for error. So what you want to do is design for its maximum headroom, like a high jumper who can clear the bar every time with lots of room to spare. That way, your network will not slow down or fail when stressed by demands from your users or from the active electronics. Here are the primary telecommunication standard organizations that you should know. First, ISO, or the International Standards Organization, is located in Geneva, Switzerland, and it is uh, responsible for bringing together a worldwide approach to developing telecommunication standards. Here in the United States, 
TIA or the Telecommunication Industry Association are the ones that actually write the American standards and ANSI, American National Standards Institute, are the ones that take the TIA standards and publish them. Other important associations include EIA, Electronic Industry Alliance, CSA, or the Canadian Standards Association, and several other uh, uh, associations in both Europe and Austria, uh, Aust uh, Australia and New Zealand. The telecommunications standards that you should be aware of include first the mother of all the standards, or the TIA EIA 568 commercial building telecommunications cabling standard. 568 uh, uh, includes three parts. B1, which is the general requirements. B2 is for copper cabling, or what's called balanced twisted pair cabling. And B3, which is the uh, part of the standard that addresses optical fiber. Complementing 568 is 569A, and this deals with pathways and spaces. 570 addresses residential or small commercial building and is very similar to 568, but again, it addresses uh, residential cabling. 606 deals with the administration of uh, 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 cabling systems, and 607 addresses grounding and bonding requirements. Now, the characteristics of a standards-based structured cabling uh, system should include, uh, first, that they are open generic cabling design. They have an open generic cabling design. They support industry standards-based single solution. They, are all, uh, they support all types of uh, communication systems. They have both a single building or several continuous building campus approach that they support all vendors and are application independent. They support multiple applications and interdependency. They support most LAN technologies, support multiple logic, uh, logical topologies, support network device interoperability, and they support future applications, technologies, and networks well into uh, uh, the 10 or 15 year time frame. A structured cabling system embraces the following modularly yet independent subsystems that define a building or cabling uh, system. First, the entrance facility, which is the demarcation point between carrier, public or private network, and customers. The outside cables enter the building through the entrance facility. Next is the equipment room which is a centralized space for telecommunication equipment such as a PBX or private branch exchange, computers and servers, and video and audio switches that, that serve the entire building or campus. Next is the backbone cabling subsystem or the distribution cabling that provides interconnection between telecommunications rooms, equipment rooms, and entrance facilities. Fourth is the telecommunication rooms uh, where the horizontal distribution cable, uh, cables are terminated and cross-connected with the backbone cables. Fifth is the horizontal cabling subsystem, which distributes the physical media uh, that connects each telecommunication outlet in the work area to the patch panel or punch-down block in the telecommunication room. And finally, the work area where the standards call for at least one telecommunication outlet that has at least one voice and one data jack. It's important to note that campuses with multiple buildings are treated the same as a single commercial building. Also note that the system supports voice as well as data. Video, audio, security, fire alarm, and other applications are also identified in various standards. This slide shows how a telecommunication network subsystems and topology are organized. 
Note the star topology and hierarchical organization, starting with the entrance facility, equipment room, and telecommunication room that are all connected together with uh, backbone cabling and cross connects. Then the work area are connected to the telecommunications room through horizontal cabling. Also note the distance limits mandated by the standards. In the backbone, the cable, the copper cable uh, for data applications is limited to 90 meters, while voice is limited to 800 meters. For optical fiber in the backbone, multiple optical fiber has a limit, distance limit of 2,000 meters, and single mode optical fiber has a, has a distance limit of 3,000 meters. Horizontal cabling, whether it's copper or optical fiber, has a 90 meter link limit and a 100 meter uh, channel limit. 